Assalamu alaikum, good evening, uh, respected faculties, dear participants, good evening everybody, especially Professor Dr. Anjan Shetty is the expert panel today. Thanks uh, for our kind presence here and also, also our Secretary General of Bangladesh Kadi Society, Abdullah Shkinder sir, also Fuzila Abdullah Samari Professor and also our respected panelists from in Bangladesh, also San Farma. We are in this program. Thank you, everybody. I just, uh, do everybody know Dr. Ranjan, Professor Ranjan Shetty is the head of the Department of Cardiology, Monipal Hospital, Bangalore, India. His today's topic interpretation of hemodynamics, oximetry, and pressure data. It is big topics. Uh, uh, he will talk, this is divided in three parts. Today's talk is the one part. Thank you, Dr. Ranjan Shetty, for your great uh, travel for us. Thank you. Uh, our, our expert panel here, Professor Abdul Shoyunda sir, Professor Mumuni Zaman, Professor Abzalur Rahman, Professor Soyed Ali Hassan sir, Professor Mir Zamaluddin, Professor Dr. Fazil Nasa Malik, Professor Mohammad Shahabuddin, Professor Dr. Prabhu Kumar Dash, Professor Chodhi Meshkata Chodri, and Dr. Khalid Mohsin Faisal Nasrullah Khan. I think they will join within a few minutes, couple of minutes. We have deep condolence. Uh, we know IPJ is the Sister concern of the Hello Healthy Heart Happy Life Organization. We lost our one of the friend is the assistant professor of sorry. Sorry. Department of Radiotherapy, working in China Medical Hospital. Two days back, he suddenly expired due to sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, we are deeply condensed and deeply saddened for his death. It is a great loss for our nation and our community above all his family. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm requesting Professor Abdul Wadi Chaudhary for his opening remarks and to start our session. Good evening, everybody, and assalamu alaikum. Today, we are going to have a feast, a feast of knowledge. And why am I saying so? I have once attended one of the lectures given by Professor Ranjit Shetty on cardiac hemodynamics. And I became an instant fan. The things that some students really fear, he makes them very simple. A stepwise logical approach so that you can make things out of some weird data which then become quite clear, quite easy. And that's an art of teaching. I think we will enjoy this art of teaching from him. And cardiac hemodynamics is important in three respects. One is that from the congenital heart disease, yes, that's very important. We are concerned with that. The second is pulmonary hypertension. And that's become a very quite a concern for us. And third is in acute uh, care setting. We may need some cardiac hemodynamic data, but I think he'll be primarily focusing on congenital heart disease and others. Those things our students fear mostly. Uh, without much ado, I'm requesting Professor Anjan Shetty to start his lecture. Uh, let us enjoy together. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Professor Anjan Shetty, please uh, share your screen. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thanks a lot for this. I hope I'm uh, audible. Uh, you know, uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm very honored to be part of this group. And uh, I visited uh, Bangladesh thrice. I've been to Dhaka three times from in last uh, four years. It's a country which I really, truly like and truly love. I really enjoyed every minute of my stay in, um, you know, Dhaka. Once I've been to Chittagong, twice or thrice I've been to Dhaka. It's such a beautiful city such nice people and uh, I keep telling uh, or you know we have some Bengali friends and Bengali patient I keep telling them that uh, the Rasgulla of Bangladesh is much better than the one you get in India and the Elish you get there you don't get it here so uh, thank you once again so I was uh, very you know honored to be part of this and once the lockdown settles I really intend to meet all of you in person in uh, in Dhaka uh, thank you now, with this, I'm going to discuss hemodynamics. I'm sure all professors here, it will be 
you know very simple and very this but you know as teachers we understand the importance of this and your exam i'm assuming that the pattern here in india and in bangladesh will be almost the same so exam the, there is a significant importance which is given to hemodynamics and also we need to understand so typically as i was discussing with the professors here that uh, it's just not possible to cover it in one lecture so what i had done long back was divided the numbers once that is the data with some calculation then i have gone to the graphs and analyzing the graph and then the anjo but what is important is see it's like learning any new language you have to know the disease like vsd asd pda and you also you know to describe it for example the the you know the way you use some words in bangla and english will not be same but if you understand the disease moment that name is uttered you uh, you will you will be able to correlate it very well so when we do cat data as dr uh, you know professor abdul uh, you know told it's important in many many settings but in congenital heart disease the importance is higher especially when we decide operability or non operability uh, and we have similar uh, demographic pattern both india and bangladesh so we will see almost similar uh, methods now all of us know the formula which we use which is vo2 divided by something in the denominator now how do you get that vo2 which is oxygen consumption so basically you should realize that what we learnt in uh, physiology about blood flow and the calculation that is what we apply even in cardiology so it's basically adaptation of the fixed principle whether you know as long as you know the inlet and the outlet outlet and you know the inlet con concentration and the outlet concentration by mathematics you can decide the blood flow to that particular organ that is the principal thing so to do vo2 which is the oxygen consumption for the whole body again whole body will be same for lung and rest of the organ because lung again gets the complete cardiac output in most cases and the body also gets complete cardiac output so vo2 is same so we could measure it using douglas bag method polar guard method or is it assumed value to make it simple for everybody what we do now is assumed value based on the chart pressures have to be measured now what do we measure first first is pressure you should always measure pressure before you do anjo that's important because even a minute amount of the dye which is used could reduce the uh, you know it would, would change the pressure later so always make sure pressure is measured first how do we measure pressure for right side obviously there are numerous catheters and there's no time to discuss each of the catheter but do we go in and measure or do we measure on the way back so what is recommended is way back that means you go to if you are on right side you wedge it first and from wedge you come back the advantage is being the body's steady state remains the same if you don't do that imagine you are struggling to enter pa then the time increases so with less than 7 minutes we need to do always confirm the chamber using the pressure tracing and do the fluoroscopic uh, 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 content what is very important is body should be in steady state if a child is agitated agitated too much sedation the whole thing changes entire data should be collected in 7 minutes please remember this rule 7 minutes and for the sake of 7 minute withdrawal pressure and saturation is better that means you enter go to pa maybe wedge it confirm your wedge and start doing the pressure and this uh, uh, sample the best is end hole catheter which could be balloon tipped or non balloon tipped if you want to wedge you need a balloon trip but endol catheter repeat it take multiple sample unfortunately now you know earlier the oximetry used to be in the cath lab and uh, as soon as you measure the saturation is given and it was very simple but nowadays i don't know in bangladesh but in india we just don't get that machines at all so we are using abg machines to give a saturation which is not the best way to do saturations are best measured by saturation uh, measurements do not over heparinize remove all air bubble if you are using a syringe remove all air bubble before capping and as soon as you get you need to measure it immediately if you can't do that 
cooling can be done with uh, uh, ice, but that's not recommended. Recommended is directly sample and you go. Plastic syringes are not that great. The best one is glass syringes, but we don't get glass syringes any longer. It's difficult. So there are some assumptions which we do. Ideally, do not use ABG machine because saturation is calculated from PO2 in ABG machine. But again, we have no choice now. Almost, uh, I'm sure one of your professors can uh, tell you, at least here, we just don't get that saturation machine any longer. Multiple sites, uh, that's what we do. We will also discuss when do we need to use uh, PO2, which is a dissolved oxygen, and when do we do it? Fine. So, what, shunt detection is a, one of the key things. And also, we should understand the current uh, reason for doing cath. You know, I'm sure most of your professors uh, agree with me that when they started and when their professors were uh, teaching, it, uh, cardiology was different. You know, people had to, the clinical examination was done. And post-clinical examination, uh, patients were to be mostly sent for surgery. And before surgery, they had to do cath and find out the hemodynamics and send. But today, ECO is far, far advanced. ECO is developed. So you don't have doubt about the diagnosis. Today, you know whether it is ASD, you know whether it is VSD or PDM. What you need to do is whether this case is operable. So it's no longer a Sherlock Holmes game. It is more mathematics and more calculation. Dye dilution is one more method. So there are lots of postgraduates here. I'm sure you need to know the methods. Cardiac output can be calculated with dye dilution with endocyanin green. And then, you know, you inject into cubital vein and see at what time it uh, uh, comes. Graph is productive. This is similar to what we do in, uh, what we learned in physiology. But remember one thing, whatever method we use, the principle is typically fixed principle. And that's what we use. How many samples should we take? That is the next question, which is definitely asked to you in exam. How many samples will you take if you want to make ideal measurements? The answer is 14 and it's difficult. So you need to go up to PA and remove 14 samples, which includes three in PA, three in RV. Remember, ventricles are tripartite. So they have inlet, they have chamber and they have outlet. Similarly, there is atrium, again, high atrium, mid atrium, low atrium. When I gave a two sample, azygous marks above and below. IVC two sample, again, renal vein marks above and below. You need one from ventricle. Iota, most of the time, you need two from iota. One from proximal, one from distal. So the sample could be 14 or 15. But what are must? You know, most of us are impatient now and uh, very active intervention is so the, you know, the cath importance has come down, but some samples are still must. One SVC is needed. Preferably RA, RV, and MPA. This many samples are must on left side, uh, right side, and LV and IOTA is needed from left side. Now, IVC saturation is higher than SVC, which is definitely the question will be asked. Why? The answer being it is a renal vein. It's not that lower limb. Lower limbs are bad, but renal vein, kidneys get one-fifth of cardiac output, and the purpose of getting that high cardiac output for a 250 uh, gram organ is actually not for oxygenation. It's for, uh, you know, excretion. So kidney, although gets a lot of blood, it's oxygen, uh, although it's a very active organ, still doesn't extract so much oxygen. So the renal veins have higher oxygen saturation. Hence, IVC saturation is 80 and typically SVC saturation is around 75. Coronary sinus is the least because heart extracts more. And pressure, again, very important. Zeroing is important. Every three to five minutes, you need to zero and make sure your pressure is fine. And it has to be at the chest level, which is also very important. Multiple hole, not preferred for pressure. You could preferably, you need to have end hole catheter or holes very close to tip. If you have multi hole, you're in LV and IOTA, you get intermediate pressure and that's not good at all. This is to highlight that mid-level is very important. Preferably have two pressure ca calculator. Varying angle will produce varying measurements in pressure and you cannot afford to have error when you are measuring. Routine oxygen uh, rum, which is uh, very, very important. Let's go to some few definition of what is step up and what is step down, which is again important for your exam. 
so decrease of oxygen saturate you know there are different numbers here i just want you to concentrate the number which is important which you are supposed to know this is how typical saturation looks svc is between 65 to 75 ivc is uh, uh, you know around 75 to 80 ra rv pa all of them are around 75 venous uh, the arterial side they are typically above 95 and these are the normal pressure and i'm sure all of you know this ra pressure slightly below la pressure when you do the pressure data what do you do what is very important is to see what is normal i will go through some uh, examples actually i have a lot of example i'm sure there is no time to do that but a few example i will analyze just to see how do we do that what do we see are we supposed to do pressure first are we supposed to do saturation first my advice look at saturation first especially look at aortic saturation and svc saturation aortic saturation will tell you whether it is a cyanotic heart disease or asynotic heart disease and look at the whole saturation chart look for any step up or step down this gives a physiological diagnosis when you look at it it will give a physiological diagnosis i am dealing with this physiology for example aorta normal will make asynotic heart disease in cyanotic heart disease you are going to look at aorta and pa aorta more than pa will be something like top physiology aorta equal to pa will be admixture physiology and aorta you know less than pa will actually be transposition physiology so one look at it you know understanding the physiology in the saturation always look at saturation do not look at pressure first make up your mind i am dealing with this disease this disease this disease next what do you do you actually look at the pressure in pressure linking is important it's important to understand imagine lv is 40 and iota is 100 now what does it this mean this means lv is not supporting iota at all this is a you know so linking is important the pressure you know in the linking that's i'll show you this how how it goes it's very interesting always make sure that ra mean and rvdp are linked rv pa is linked pcwp you know there is a connection between pressures and you just can't have random pressure even while noting down make sure blood flows forward also understand if for example iota is higher than lv and iota is equal to rv you are actually dealing with the transposition or corrected transposition physiology so these are the things which will be evident just at look, you know when you look at it also very important to see ra la pressure rv lv pressure and we'll also discuss what it means so it's very important for us to understand now let's go to some simple calculation so qp is flow through pulmonary qs is flow through systemic but what is important for you to understand is qep you know that is effective pulmonary blood flow in any calculation qep is the least number so if i have to define qep that is the amount of blood which goes from the it's a systemic venous return which enters pa systemic venous return you know that is effective that means that is the blood which is going to lung to get oxygenated i'm sure there are no uh, audience in the group i would love to ask some question actually if they were there name a condition where qep is low but qp is very high you know that means there is lot of pulmonary blood flow but the systemic venous return going to pulmonary blood flow is very very low that's tga you know so it's very interesting to know that there could be lot of pulmonary blood flow but half of it could be pulmonary venous return which is going and not the systemic venous return so qep in any calculation is the least number when do you do it you don't have to do it in all cases at all you don't even have to do it in top so you don't do it in left right shunt you don't have to do right to left especially wherever you think bidirectional shunt that is where you need to do qep that means if there is evidence of step up in one side and step down in the other side that's bidirectional see these words like bidirectional are not uh, they are not random english words when we deal with cardiology whether it's clinical cardiology echo or cath bidirectionality means you need to have evidence of left to right shunt and you also need to have evidence of right to left shunt when you have these both calculate qvp 
And the formula is pretty simple there. Formula for QEP will come to that later, but it's simple. Fixed principle. Please remember this C is the formula which we use. What's very important is VO2 divided by arteriovenous difference in oxygen saturation works. The fixed principle can be used in any condition with any material, but we use oxygen because it's easy. You know, you don't have to add oxygen or remove oxygen. Most of the time, we know the oxygen saturation in the arterial end. We know the oxygen saturation in the venous end. And we know the total oxygen consumption. So total oxygen, which is VO2, which nowadays we get from the chart, divided by the arterial and the venous will actually give you the flow across that organ. So for pulmonary, the, that will be PV, which is the artery for pulmonary, minus PA, which is the venous end technically. So VO2 divided by PV total oxygen minus PA total oxygen will give us pulmonary blood flow. Same thing for iota. Systemic will be from iotic uh, blood flow, uh, iota minus RA or whichever uh, mixed venous you want to take will give the systemic blood flow. So stand calculation, we need oxygen consumption, calculation of saturation and oxygen content. How do we do oxygen consumption? We can do Douglas and all other methods. But most of the time, what we do is this formula. If it is a small child, we could use 125 into body surface area. Or you could go by this chart. This chart is something which is used most commonly. So remember, heart rate is also extremely important. Sometimes what happens is the, in the beginning, the heart rate is different. Later, heart rate becomes different. Like BMV calculation. Heart rate changes, then the card, VO2 changes. So remember, it is age and heart rate which decide VO2. And based on that, you might, you have. VO2 need to be multiplied by body surface area, which we do it at later. Otherwise, whatever answer you get is actually indexed to body surface area. So how do you get saturation and oxygen content? We believe that dissolved oxygen, which comes from the PaO2, which you need an ABG, is a very small quantity. So hemoglobin into 1.34, into saturation gives you the oxygen, uh, you know, gives us the uh, total oxygen content in that chamber. So for, for example, for iota, it would be hemoglobin 1.34 into saturation of iota, which is 96 or 97. For SVC, that will be hemoglobin into 1.34 into SVC. Total oxygen carrying capacity is equal to this formula, 3436 into oxygen saturation. Dissolved oxygen is a very, very small component. So we typically ignore the dissolved oxygen. I'll tell you conditions where we need to use dissolved oxygen. If you are using post, remember something. If you are doing post oxygen data, you must use dissolved oxygen also. Then the formula becomes a little more complicated, but you must do for post. But pre, you don't have to use dissolved at all. I'll go through some examples quickly so that you understand. But for most, you must use. Now, how do you calculate QP? VO2, which is from the chart, divided by pulmonary vein, O2, minus pulmonary artery, O2 content. How do you get this? 13.1.36 into 10 into hemoglobin, into saturation in pulmonary vein. And the same thing is done in pulmonary artery. You also get QS by the similar formula. How do you get a mixed venous sample? It's best if, the, if there is no shunt, the best mixed venous is actually pulmonary artery. If there is no shunt, pulmonary artery becomes a mixed venous. Like for DCM cases and acute cases like heart attack, uh, you know, it becomes the best. If it is not, then, you know, the previous to the chamber, previous to a shunt becomes an important chamber. SVC alone can be used or you can use 3 SVC plus 1 IVC divided by 4. Because as, as we were discussing, IVC saturation is higher. It's much higher. And it's not a simple mathematics. Saturation doesn't because 86 plus 80 doesn't become 83. You know, in saturation, because there is a lot of diffusion, it doesn't add that easily. So if you want to do a mixed venous, especially for cases like ASD, we need to do 3 SVC plus 1 IVC divided by 4, or you can use SVC alone. 
simple QPQS calculation, the same equation, if you put lots of things are calculated, what you all remain, what remains is iotic saturation minus mixed venous divided by pulmonary vein minus PA. So this will tell us, you know, if somebody is asking like a rapid fire, this will give, tell us the QPQS ratio. I'm again coming back to Q effective because this is important concept. It's the actual desaturated blood reaching PA for oxygenation. If there is no shunt, all the numbers are same. But if there is shunt, it is VO2, which is coming from the formula, divided by pulmonary vein oxygen, which is the highest number in the chart, with mixed venous, which is the lowest number. That means the denominator for this equation is always the biggest in any calculation. Since the denominator is biggest, it is always the least number in the chart. Q effective is the least number in the chart. If you are getting it higher than QP or QS, there is an error in calculation. Remember, Q effective is the least number in the chart. How do we calculate cardiac flow and shunt? Left to right will, uh, yeah, left to right shunt, uh, you know, in bidirectional you need to do QP. I hope uh, I'm clear here. Remember what we learned till now is VO2 is what we use from chart. It is indexed to meter, meter square. QEP is the, um, is the real amount which matters. And QEP is always the small number you, you know, amount of left to right, right shunt can be easily calculated by minusing it. And bidirectional shunt, you need QP. And based on that, you can subtract to find amount of left to right shunt, amount of right to left shunt, which is present. Now, this is one more thing which is important. You, when you look at the saturation data, I told you we need to look at the saturation data. When you look at, when will you say step up, it's significant. So step up is significant depending on RA, you know, there are numbers and these numbers varies according to different books. I want you, I don't want you to get confused too much. If it is a mean value, remember 755. That means from SVC to RA, 7. RA to RV, 5. RV to PA, 5. If it is saturation, if it is single value, it is 11, 10, and 5. The last one remains 10. But remember 755 when you do that. Step down any 2%, anything below 92 is definitely step down. Below 95, we have to think of step down. Step up value, I've compiled all the values given in different charts here. 755 is what is that given in Grossman, which is the standard book. Moss and Adam, which is a one more standard book, you could call 966. So use either of them. I prefer 755 because Grossman gives it, but use either of them, which is important. Again, this is compilation showing, remember, 755, step up of 7, 5, and 5. Shunt calculation in eco, you know, clinically more than 2 is to 1 is significant. In cath, more than 1, 1 1.5 is to 1 is significant. More than 2 is to 1 is definitely significant. If you are not using the complicated formula, imagine IOTA is 98. This is 68, you know, SVC is 68, that will become 30, divided by PV is 99 and PA is, you know, uh, 89, this will be 10, so it will become 3 to 1. So this calculation becomes very simple. Pulmonary vascular resistance calculation and PVR-SVR ratio are extremely important. That's what you should understand. Resistance is calculated like electricity. We use the Ohm's law. Resistance is calculated by pressure divided by flow. So all you have to know is pressure divided by flow. At birth, PVR is higher, but later it reduces. Again, PVR is typically one to two Woods unit, which you get from the formula. And Wood is, you know, Paul Wood is a person who has done a lot of work in in to respect him. The unit is Wood unit, which will be equal into 80 dynes per uh, uh, meter square. That is the wood unit. Now, this is the wood unit. SVR is between 10 to 20. PVR is around 1. This is important number and easily calculatable. And this is what helps us to make the diagnosis. What is unfavorable for surgery? I'm sure there are cardiac surgeons also in this group. What is unfavorable? That number keeps varying. It's not one number. But typically, 
less than 5 is favorable but more than 5 is unfavorable but for asd even 5 is too much for vsd up to 10 is okay for pda even up to 15 is okay in you would tune it so 5 10 15 asd although is a much simpler shunt the pulmonary vasculature in vsd behaves extremely different from other disease so you need to respect asd that's what we need to understand how do you do vascular uh, you know vaso reactivity imagine that pvr is more than 6 if it's less than 6 you can uh, less than 6 or 5 you could directly go or pvr svr ratio is less than 0.3 you can directly send for surgery but if not if it is intermediate we do vaso reactivity vaso reactivity is preferably done using oxygen 100% oxygen given with a mask for 10 minutes without sedating the patient post if the shunt increases and if the pvr comes down it is operable word of caution here i wouldn't believe this for asd if asd baseline shunt is not more than 2 is to 1 subjecting it to device or a procedure is not advisable for asd vsd pda these can be done and it is it is workable what is a one more word of caution if you use 100% oxygen dissolved oxygen is important and that's a big number you need to use it in formula also it's the same formula but each of them you have to add amount of dissolved oxygen which is 0.003 into pao2 you will be surprised that pao2 in that condition could be 600 400 you know that's going to be a big number you're going to have error calculations will go wrong so use oxygen so when do we use dissolved oxygen whenever we use oxygen we also use dissolved oxygen what's the positive response fall in the pa diastolic usually systolic doesn't fall you know if you are talking about vsd you are talking about asd what decides the systolic bp you know as we do the pressure data you realize that when rv pressure is equal to lv pressure it's not shunt which decides it is the size of vsd which decides when pa pressure is equal to aortic pressure again it is the size of vsd asd you know pda which decides so if the size is remember there are two rooms and they are connected if the size is big pressure will be same but blood flow is decided by the resistance so do not confuse pressure to resistance even though pressure between two chamber is same the blood will follow the route of least resistance so if the resistance for example svr pvr imagine vsd from day of birth if there is a large vsd pressure between rv and lv will be same why there is a large vsd but then shunt initially will be left to right right to left but later as the pvr falls shunt will become more left to right as shunt becomes more left to right uh you know that there will be torrential flow across the uh, this one because pvr initially is less than svr later as the eisenmengerization reaction sets in the pvr starts rising but throughout the pressure systolic pressure of rv and lv systolic pressure of pa and iota were same so systolic pressure does not change just because you use a vaso reactive test in post tricuspid shunt what changes is mean pressure and diastolic pressure with increasing shunt la pressure might rise pvr should fall but svr should be unchanged if svr is also falling then it could be some hemodynamic insult which is producing it so the pvr should fall but the svr should remain unchanged let's do one calculation because it's too boring to discuss theory all the time let's do this calculation so there is one person uh, five year old with large vsd moment we enter large vsd look at this rv pressure and lv pressure is nearly same rv and pa pressure is same so as we discussed how do we analyze this first look at the saturation data no that's what we discussed so if you look at saturation lv and iota is almost okay it's there may be a mild desaturation and if i look at this svc to ra is again same ra to rv there is 13 mm you should tell it okay you should tell the number of that, that makes it better 
you can't just tell step up at rv tell 13% step up at rv rv to pa same so what i see here is practically maybe slight desaturation very very significant because the criteria here says 755 no so 5 becomes significant here there is 13 significant moment to i see this now i go back to the pressures pressures are is okay rv is elevated immediately i look at iota and lv so it's almost systemic maybe slightly lower but almost systemic there is no ps so looking at this i realize that there is a step up at rv and there is a connection between rv and pa and it's a large vsd what is the shunt you know it's a 5 year old you know large vsd little bit step down here i am worried whether this child is operable so we do some calculation how do we do o2 which comes from the chart okay into pulmonary vein oxygenation you have the number so qp is calculated by 91 which is same for oxygen consumption so here it is 98 minus 78 to saturation divided by 100 into 17.6 so you, this 17.6 comes by the oxygen uh, content which is, which which can be taken out and calculated and same thing you do for qp so as long as you know the saturation you can just keep the saturation apart and that is in 100 and then total oxygen concentration can be calculated because 1.36 into 10 into hemoglobin into oxygen will carry the oxygen ca carrying capacity that into saturation will actually give the oxygen carrying capacity of that particular chamber which could be artery which could be a so going by this the qpqs is 1 1.3 what do we do we also do svr pvr svri was 22 pvr is 19 so the total one is you know the ratio is 0.45 now do we operate this child or no it's five year and what do you do when in doubt so now we have a real dilemma we have done all the mathematics which we know which includes qpqs but the, there is a borderline value and shunt is only 1.3 as we discussed if there is a pvr which is more than 5 or 6 pvri or if the ratio is between 0.3 to 0.6 we need to do the next level which is uh, which is oxygen study no we need to do oxygen study so what we do is do a oxygen study on this and calculate qp and qs and we find that the now the shunt is 4.7 and uh, uh, the uh, and the calculation actually makes the child operable i'll come to some of those examples which makes it easy one more example of uh, you know the example of uh, similar case this was the pre oxygen data which was iota is borderline low and there is step up of 15 between ra and rv but post oxygen the step up looks tremendous you know it looks a very tremendous step up for post oxygen and uh, the pre oxygen saturation numbers are here post oxygen saturation numbers are here and we can do the calculation so we need to do this calculation calculate Uh, qp calculate qs and then get the answer so this uh, this patient the second patient was medically managed so basic analysis how do we analysis enough of theory let's be more practical now how do we analyze first is the data correct because sometimes the data is absurd it's taken wrongly wrong entry or wrong collection if it is this as i told you first look at saturation is there systemic desaturation is there pulmonary venous desaturation is there a step up now we know the criteria for step up is ventricular artery concordance at this point you stop at saturation you make a physiological diagnosis tell whether this is a shunt whether this is a step up whether this is tga physiology whether it is a admixture physiology or whether it is a top physiology then you look at the pressure data is the ventricular arterial concordance very important like i told you in the example is aortic pressure wide and are ias and ivs intact causes for step down again atrial each of the chamber level you have different levels of step down and we need to know 
you should also understand the top the step down is predominantly in iota and not in lv because of the bidirectional shunt and overriding iota and there are many causes of step down everywhere step up even in your sleep you should be able to tell the step up causes of step up at ra like asd pa pvc lv and step up at rv all these causes should be known and then we should do so with this i will now talk uh, take about the you know the questions and before that i want to bring one concept and i'm going to discuss uh, you know maybe do i don't know how much time i have but uh, i would like to discuss at least three to five examples so that we understand these examples are in order of uh, disease because we are trying to understand the disease but that's okay uh, how do you calculate qp to how do you index qp to body surface area qp is multiplied to body surface area qs is multiplied to body surface area what is important is pvr psvr you know uh, when you have a, the value which you get is actually indexed to body surface area so if you want qp to be indexed qp you divide by body surface area qs you divide by body surface area but pvr and svr you multiply that's one thing you have to remember i am just going to repeat this when you want to qp to be indexed you divide when you want qs to be indexed you divide because normally cardiac output is 5 but cardiac index is 3.2 you divide but for pressure for resistance you multiply okay you don't divide so like the example which we have given pvr i and svr i pvr into body surface area and svr into body surface area so dr abdul do you have any students who are also logged in who can maybe answer this question mosin can some of the students to respond yeah if any students you know will go through some example uh, asd with ps one student is asd with pulmonary stenosis okay somebody already answered they are typing or how are they answering uh they typing asd with pulmonary stenosis oh good 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 so somebody feels it is asd with pulmonary stenosis that's a interesting concept no let's see why they think like that so here there is a step up between uh, you know there are two three things i'm happy people are answering and not sleeping so if you have more leeway about time if you want we can go Yeah, no, no, no issues. I will, I will uh, totally leave it to you. There are actually twenty-five, twenty-six such examples. So whenever we stop, we stop. Okay. Yeah. Saying normal. Isha. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the answer one person or two. Many have written. I am very happy with your uh, the Bangladeshi yeah. students. Call it uh, definitely is higher than Indian students. I can definitely tell you that. And the answer is normal. Yes. Why normal? See, this is the way. You look at the saturation data. All saturation normal. No step up, no step down. Look at the pressure. All pressure normal. No step up, no step down. I'm extremely happy with all of you. So let me just check for the next one. Yes, next one, please. we can say please we are waiting for instant yeah it's yes. like rapid fire there may be a lag yeah. also yeah. professor sometimes no there is a lag yeah. between when the type and uh... yeah uh some um, bsd yes many have written bsd so yes, yes. there is yes. yeah there as there is step up between ra and rv which is around 20 you know 10 there is step up between ra and rv which is 10 and there is no step down and very interesting actually all of them got the answer right uh, you know then what do we do we look at the pressure now pressure one of, one of, low atl asd one of the student a low atl asd is okay yeah, yes the problem with that is there is a significant step up but ra and la pressure are not equal Uh, typically a significant asd one with a one which is producing a good shunt actually should have ra and la pressure equal here ra and la pressure are not equal so likely bsd 
but a small VSD. Because small or big is decided by the pressure gradient. So if you look at here, between LV and IOTA, RV, there is a lot of pressure gradient. There is a small VSD. Can anybody calculate the shunt in this case by using... Thank you, Dr. Sanjidan. Dr. Sanjidan Sari asked the question, nicely, small VSD. Sanjidan. Yes, yes. I, I was very impressed with that answer, yes. That's the right answer. It is VSD, it is small. Small in size because the pressure gradient is high. Is it small in shunt? How do we calculate the shunt? Small, again, when you say small, small in size is not same as small in shunt. So shunt we calculate here. If you want to calculate, it will be 76 minus, say, 99, which will be the, numer uh, which will be the uh, numerator. You know, and divided by nine, uh, 98 minus 65 will be the uh, will be the numerator, and 99 minus 76 will be the denominator. So shunt also will be very small. Okay, so it's restrictive versus non-restrictive. This is a restrictive VSD, restricted by size and a small shunt. This is the calculation for this case. QP is 0 0.6 QS. Shunt is just 1.41. PBR is 131. You know, all this, I think if you can do later, it is good. You know, once, just take some example, do all the calculation. So, next one, can anybody answer? And any doubts, feel free to type. You know, you could ask me, you could ask any one of your professor. If you have doubts, please ask. They are trying. I think they are wait a few seconds. I think they will give the answer. Yes, yes, done. <laughs> done. <laughs> yes, again, I think I have seen some answer. Yes. So there is a significant step up of 14 between RA and RV. But if you look at the level, uh, the pressure here, compared to the previous case, the pressure is higher. So this is a moderate VSD. Large VSD yes. will have same size. A small restrictive VSD will have normal RV pressure. Whereas here, there is a moderate rise. So VSD, moderate. I think Sanjida is right again. It's a moderate yes. sized VSD which is present. Now, you know, there are lots of theory questions. In the exam, they're going to ask you a lot of theory. What would you do to this patient? Why would you close this? If you, you have to close this either by surgery or by device, but the reason for closing is to prevent LV dysfunction and not for isenmengerization. Chance of this VSD isenmengerizing is less than 3%. But it is closed for to prevent LV dysfunction. So as we go forward, you'll know the diseases also. Okay, sorry. More than two. Someone did, uh, is the people. Yes, this is the next one. Yes. Next question. Yes. 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 So there is pre-oxygen saturation and there is a post-oxygen saturation. There is a pre, this one. So you understand why there was a need to do pre and post in this case and what is the diagnosis. As I told you, the questions, uh, you know, the examples I gave were, you know, put in such a order that you understand the disease also, not just like a random spotter. So there is a message which we are trying to give with the examples. Yes. Somebody yes, has... Type it. Uh, okay. Large yeah. base with PS. Exactly. Uh, with base, PS, is it? There's no pH, I think. No, no. Yeah. So okay. here, if you see yeah. the pressure between RV and LV is exactly same and shunt, there is step up between RA and RV of 10. There's also step down. So there is some sign of bidirectionality. So whenever this happens with high pressure, what we do is we give oxygen. We do reversibility. When the reversibility was done, there was a huge, bigger step up and the pressure remained the same. The diastolic pressure has fallen in PA, you know, diastolic. Systolic is same. The diastolic is fallen. So this is operable. At this point, what we do is we do the cath. Pre-oxygen, QP was 1.46. Post-oxygen, QP was 4.5. But remember, if you are doing post, you have to consider dissolved PO2. SVR, PVRI, see, remember, PVRI is multiplication, not division. 
is 9.21 and SVRI uh, post is 3.53. So going by this, without fall in SVR, SVR is risen here but not fallen. So without fall in SVR, I, the PVRI is fallen. That means this is reversible and this is operable. So this VSD has to be operated early. Why do we operate? If you don't operate, it's going to isomengarize because this is a large VSD which is which is producing a high PA pressure. Whereas the previous one, although shunt was higher to start with, was actually a moderate VSD. Moderates do not isomengarize, large isomengarize. Large also have failure. And also it's important for people to understand, you know, we wait till one year if needed for the VSD to close on its own. Beyond one year, we don't wait because most of them isomengarize by that time. Next example, please. Yes, next one. Look at the patient listed. Yeah, well done. Yes, most of them got it right, yes. So here again, you look at the this one, there is a significant step up at RV. Then, but PA pressure and RV pressure are not same and there is definitely PS here. No, the mean PA is also low and there is a huge gradient. One question, is it tough? I think all of you told VSD PS, is it tough? And people type that, is it tough? Yes, no. Yeah, I think no. all are very good. Yes, it's no. Why TOF has to have an unrestrictive VSD, non-restrictive? The pressure between RV and PA is same. Again, TOF, RV, PA pressure is same because of, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is some RVOTO, maybe Gasols, which is acquired RVOTO in VSD, maybe valvular PS, but definitely not TOF, not even pink TOF, because whether the TOF is pink or blue, RV and PA, RV and LV pressure is same. Next one. Dr. Nishar, please do the ER. Sanjeev, Dr. Dr. Nishar, Dr. Nishar, Dr. please do the ER. Yes, they are given the answer, no? Yes, some please of them the definitely. Yard. So there is, uh, is there a step up here? Let's go systematic. Is there a step up here? RA to RB6, there is step up, no? Cutoff is, uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, that's 5 is that 755. So cutoff is, there is 6. What else do we see? Uh, aortic diastolic is low. So it's likely VSDAR. Is it RSOV or is it VSDAR? It's likely VSDAR because, uh, you know, uh, the AR looks very significant. If at all it was RSOV which was bringing the diastolic pressure so low, then the shunt also would have been torrential. No? Here the shunt is not much. So it is VSDAR and not RSOV. RSOV to RV with so low diastolic pressure would have had a torrential shunt. Okay, so it is VSDAR. The next one. The students are very good. Or the question paper is already leaked. <laughs> <laughs> they must have seen Yes, there are people who have written answer, no? 
ASD with yeah. pulmonary hypertension, ASD, most of them have written it as ASD, no? And, ASD uh, and pulmonary Yes, ASD with pulmonary artery hypertension. But uh, the answer is actually VSD, which is Jarboards, uh, partly because, I mean, not no one answer is right or wrong, but the whole point the pressure, is right. the LA right. pressure and RA pressure is the key. If it is ASD, LA and RA should be same. Here, what we see is RV is increased, and there is, seems to be two levels step up, you know, in the sense RA is high and RV is also, you know, low RA is higher than high RA. Uh, so, yeah, Jerbots is most likely because RV and PA pressure is same, but RA pressure is higher than LA pressure, you know. Typically, if it is a AS, if it is a ASD, RA and LA should be equal. Somebody is asking, why can't it be VSDTR? Yes, it can be VSDTR also. That will be called indirect gerboards. Yes, it can be VSDTR. But with TR, the V becomes much, much more than A. You know, that's how the TR presents. Uh, but it is possible, VSDTR. Good there. Sorry. Is the Parankarki from Nepal. Oh, really? Nice, nice, nice. Yes, in Nepal. Oh, that per person is, yeah. Nepal. Yes, that's nice. That's nice to know that you have a, you know, the whole uh, subcontinent with you. Yeah, <laughs> it's very nice. So what's the answer here? TBBC, total MLS pulmonary balance disease. Someone write TBBC. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is very interesting to understand, no? So, uh, the question is, see, this is what SVC is high, IVC is low, and admixture, the same saturation everywhere, especially there is systemic desaturation, but PA and IOTA are same. This is admixture physiology. What is the admixture chamber? SVC. SVC is where all the blood, SVC and RA is all the blood is mixing there. So, SVC is the admixed chamber. Now, question is, RV pressure is 50, PA pressure is 35, RA is 6, LA is 6. So, do you think there is the obstruction? There is some PAH. So, is there a obstruction? TAPV6 can be obstructed, you know? And what are the level of obstruction? Who wants to try it? Is it obstructed TAPV6 or the pressure is because just because of the shunt? Anybody they want to type? Is there an obstruction? Because with TAPVC, that is the worry, you know. Infracardiac is always obstructed. Why is it always obstructed infracardiac? Not because it goes through diaphragm, but it goes to liver sinusoids, which is capillary. Most of the time, infracardiac is always obstructed. Supracardiac may or may not be. Yes, no obstruction is the correct answer. The level of obstruction is could be interatrial septum also. If RA, PFO is present, if LA is much lower than RA, that could be the level of obstruction and that can lead to pH. But here, since the mean pressure is same, it's okay. Remember, LA is at mercy of RA in this condition. Only outflow to LA is from RB, RA. Yes, unobstructed supracardiac. Okay, so I think with this, I mean, there are other examples, but uh, I think it's time to stop and uh, uh, it must be quite late there, much more than, yeah, it's 9.30 here, so it must be 10 there. So, you know, I think with this, we could uh, we could actually stop, Dr. Mosim. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you very much. I'm, I'll be happy to join any time in future. With the, maybe with the, you know more examples or cat data or anjo whatever you prefer anytime yes thank you so much for your excellent nice demonstration we are waiting for I think uh, another lecture soon thank yes. you so much uh, professor uh, Abdul Abdul Shabir sir do you hear me professor Shabir sir. Abdullah Shafi Minister, do you hear me?
Dr. Mohan Chawan, Dr. Professor Mohan Chawan, do you hear me? Sir. Professor Mohan Chawan. I'm sorry. 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 I think uh, next lecture we will be see again Dr. Ranjan Shetty. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, Professor Abdul Rahman, sir. Do you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yes. Yes. I think uh, this is an uh, relevant, this is very important for our fellows and day to day practice on the cat lab. We sometimes forget this. And this is a basic. And I think so. Thank you, Ranjan, for your uh, nice lecture. And I'm uh, thank you, IPD, for arranging this. We are looking forward. We are looking to see you very soon. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Abdul Wadi Choudhury, sir. Professor Abdul Wadi Choudhury. Well, uh, I think everybody has enjoyed it. I was telling the way he tells a very systematic and logical way. So one step at a time. He thinks why you are thinking in that particular way. That helps. That helps. And of course we will get a little bit confused, but we practice. And as this lecture will be uh, rec is recorded and will be available in YouTube, so the student can go through it again and again to understand the final points, why he is saying what. Uh, for example, in this case, the KPVC, why it is important that it's obstructed or non-obstructed. Can you elaborate on that, Professor Shetty? Yeah, yeah, sure, sir, sure. So when you look at PAPVC, now the when it's supracardiac PAPVC, the shunt comes to the SVC. Now the question is, there could be obstruction at the pulmonary veins, which is difficult to pick up. It manifests as PAH. Moment you have obstruction in the any venous system, there will be black flow and it manifests as PAH. One important site of obstruction is actually the atrial septum itself. Imagine the atrial septum. Instead of having an ASD, there is a PFO. There is a gradient between RA and LA. Then the pressure in RA rises and it goes back. Going back, in this case, all the pulmonary veins are also draining into RA. So, movement RA pressure is high. That also leads to PV, uh, you know, PVH in case of uh, 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 sinus, uh, yeah, in case of uh, TAPVC. So always make sure RA pressure and LA pressure are equal. This is one condition where we may have to do balloon atrial septostomy, like TGA. You know, if there is obstruction, the patient presents with hypotension and PAH. One TAPVC is one condition where if the atrial communication is bad, we may have to give balloon atrial septostomy. Everybody accepts pulmonary vein to be obstructed at site of joining systemic vein or at level of diaphragm, or when it goes, enters the portal vein. But one more site of obstruction is actually atrial septum, where because of lack of blood flowing into LA, the pressure in RA rises and the pressure goes back. Thank you. Uh, Professor Dr. Mishkat Amit, sir. Professor Dr. Mishkat Amit. Thank you very much for inviting me. on. Uh, actually, I had the opportunity to go through this lecture earlier. And also Professor Vadu. And at that day, we were so excited with that lecture. And probably from that, Professor Vadu has uh, has idea in his mind that our students should enjoy this. Very much informative and enjoyable lecture. But uh, one thing has to be mentioned that in, in recent practice, uh, the, we are intervention prone uh, cardiologists. So we do not go to the cath lab very much and we do not take our student to there very uh, so much. And doing a uh, catheterization in congenital heart disease, you need to be precise in so many so many respects. You have to make things everywhere perfect. So if you want to learn to be a perfectionist, perfectionist, then the catheter in the congenital heart disease will be a very good area where a student can learn how to become a perfect cardiologist, perfect intervention, perfect um, cath specialist. So more and more, we should take our student to there. In this lecture, we have also some. Uh, I, I have also some uh, uh, some take uh, take home message. That is, beside the conventional uh, shunt, that is atrial ASD, VSD, and PDA, we should have also back in our mind about the rupture sinus valsalva, coronary fistula to RA and RB, uh, and we really have to look at the 
pressure difference between right atrium and the left atrium, which is the clue where we, we, we will be able to differentiate in between the, uh, shunt, the conventional shunt and the non-conventional shunt. And also we have learned from this lecture that uh, uh, looking at the pressure on the aorta will make a different diagnosis from the conventional, conventional thought. <coughs> lecture, we also saw some cases of uh, uh, persistent uh, left superior vena cover and we, we saw a case of pulmonary arteriovenous uh, fistula. And I think if we could continue even one more hour, then our student would not have been exhausted. Anyway, well, we had a lot. Thank you very much yes. uh, for entertaining us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Khalid Mohsin, Dr. Mohamed Khalid Mohsin. Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, yes. equally to uh, the previous lecture of Professor Sandeep Mishra, he also talked on this subject, and this is a, quite a revision of uh, that day. And we uh, have a more opportunity to make our conception clear of uh, this topic. This is a basic of all postgraduate doctors, but with the separation of adult cardiology and pediatric cardiology, many of our fellows have been deprived of this sort of exercise in their practical life. Though we were fortunate to have this opportunity to have our starting in the journey in the invasive cardiology with uh, this type of uh, hemodynamic data oximetry, so we, I think that it, it is a must for all postgraduate fellows in adult and pediatric cardiology to be conversant with this type of uh, hemodynamic and oximetry data. Whatever intervention they do, if they do coronary intervention, they do, do structural heart intervention, they do pediatric intervention, but this is the basic. So there is no way out uh, forward without having a clear conception. So thank you very much for enlightening us and uh, hopefully our young fellows will understand the importance of this event that they, they, do, they don't do pediatric cardiology in future. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, Urmaski. this is a topic uh, which I was always requesting. So we do not teach our fellows uh, and this is a very good uh, lecture from Professor Ranjan. Thank you, Professor Ranjan, IPDI, for arranging this class. These classes are very practical, and our residents are appearing for exams. It's very practical, exam-oriented. Thank you very much, and I hope these sort of practical sessions which should continue. So my request to IPDI, let's have second sessions with uh, practical sessions. Thank you. Yeah, I'm hoping for two more. Uh, as he has promised, Professor Shetty. Professor Pavir Kumar Das from uh, Chittagong is another uh, commercial city in Bangladesh. Uh, Professor Dr. Pavir Kumar Das is the nice city in, you know, Chittagong is Coxal Bajar, near Coxal Bajar. Uh, Professor Pavir Das. So, Professor Pavir. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. First of all, I give my heartfelt thanks to Ranjan Shetty. Dr. Shetty, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you, sir. Yes, yes. I was in your place. My mentor was Pradeep Shetty. Oh, nice. Narayana Hospital. Yes, yes. And, and Dr. Dr. Devi Prashashri, very close to not only me, all over uh, Bangladesh, uh, 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 it is of uh, patient and uh, cardiologist and physician, whatever you say. Correct. <laughs> I find... Uh, I find my uh, Shetty, uh, my friend in uh, uh, Bangalore, once again from your uh, presentation. So from your presentation, PAPBC, PAPBC, PLSBC, coronary epifacial, all things are very clear to our students as well as our fellows. So most of the students uh, of cardiology start with this oximetry, but when they become interventional cardiologists, suddenly they forget most of the things. So your uh, presentation and lecture is a reminder on upon that thing. We should always remember all these things, the physics, the hemodynamics, the basics of this uh, cardiology subject. I have a small question to you, uh, Dr. Yeah, yeah, Shetty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this COVID era, uh, this oximeter and oximetry is uh, known to possibly all of over the populations of the uh, world. Most of the people... Uh, 
they know about this oximeter. Correct. Because of this COVID. Yes, yes. If, if, uh, if they use this oximeter in the, in the finger, yes. the reading which comes in the machine, is it uh, comparable to actual oxygen in the uh, heart chamber in the uh, great vessels or there may be some uh, difference? Yeah, there, there, it's, a, it's a very good question. Actually, I have a publication long back. What we did was... Uh, when, uh, you know, there's an interesting publication. Some people with hypotension, you don't get their pulse oximeter. So what we did was we connected their blood, the arterial blood, into a, you know, canal, channel, and we put a pulse oximeter there on that. Yeah. You know, the blood comes out and you put a pulse oximeter and it did pick up, uh, uh, you know, pick up the saturation. So, but we are not tried in the venous chamber. We are not tried in the uh, the the PA or this, but in IOTA we have tried and there's one publication in a, I did it with one of my anesthetic friends, so it's in one of the anesthesia journal, this particular publication. So it's a very important uh, concept and that may be cost effective. If you can put to glass, you know, glass tube and put the saturation, it may be very cost effective. Very good idea, Dr. Prabir. We should all... Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shet, uh, Dad. Thank you, Ranjan. May I may convey my compliments to all uh, my respected uh, mentors and uh, my friend Shetis in your place. Thank you. And I also want to personally invite all of you to Bangalore. It's a nice city. <laughs> Whenever you're, you're here. Really, 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 I enjoyed, I enjoyed much uh, when I, I, I my stay there. Uh, I enjoyed much. Uh, this people of Bangalore is very uh, close to me, really. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Mohammad Shahbuddin is the professor of Sri College Hospital. Professor Mohammad Shahbuddin, do you hear me? Professor Dr. Mohammad Shahbuddin. Yes, uh, Mohsin. Thank you Sir. very much for Sir. giving me the opportunity Sir. to do something. Uh, I uh, first of all I get, uh, give my uh, thanks to Dr. Ranjan Chetty for his excellent and brilliant presentation regarding the unusual presentation. As, as because this is unusual, as uh, because I have said this, uh, this is not easily or understandable, and uh, there is not so much uh, uh, presentation on this. Only we have get two presentation, most probably uh, so far I can realize. But most of the time we get more and more uh, presentations, uh, including other subjects. So uh, this is a rare practice subject uh, that has been explained very vividly and very brilliant and very excellently by the presenter. Thanks, the presenter, for uh, making these difficult things to understandable to all. Thanks once again. Thank you, sir. A few questions from, from our uh, budding cardiologist. I think Dr. Neheruma from uh, National Heart Foundation, do you hear me? He's the, one of the uh, pretty cardiologists. I think yes. the professor of uh, Dr. Nehruma, do you yes. hear me? Thank yes, you, please. Sir, thank you for the uh, excellent talk, sir. I am a pediatric cardiologist, so the hemodynamic part is the most important part for me. I have uh, for some difficulties, and I want to hear something. That we have sometimes we have to do under three years of age who have syndrome child who having severe pulmonary hypertension and double shunt or triple shunt. Yes. So have to go for cat lab and uh, you showed that Lafarge method that included above three years. Yes. So this group of people, uh, what should uh, we, uh, what should your advice or how you calculate this uh, VO2? Yes, it's 125 into body surface area. For people who are less, it's 125 into body surface area. You have your calculation of uh, yes. body surface area. No? So you do it with 125. And uh, number two, sometimes we have to do transposition of great arteries. Referral is late, so um, the PA is PA vascularity is also different from other group of uh, baby. So there is more prone to develop severe pulmonary hypertension in earlier periods. So we okay. have to decide that should we go for arterial switch or sometimes sending also we can go. Yes. So at that time we have to do cardiac cat. Mm -hmm. So we know that uh, in TG it is parallel circulation means. Uh, yes the QP from PM, PP minus PA, but yes. for the group, how you calculate this QP or key base? Yes. So, uh, although it is parallel, the calculation will still remain the same unless there is one more flow to the PA. Otherwise, the calculation between QP and QA remains same. 
but uh, in dg as you rightly pointed out we need to understand the disease the numbers cannot be taken in isolation i mean just to extend a 1 year old qpqs and pvr is not same as 11 year old qpqs pr so by the age of 3 years a tga 66 to 80% isenmengerize you know it's a big number which isenmengerize it's only less than 1 year you know and tga isenmengerization starts by 6 months so it's a very dangerous disease and one more i think uh, she has brought in a very important point what do you do when in doubt when in doubt do not operate eisenmengers typically have better prognosis than the you know than pphn you know when you operate on this you convert pphn so normal eisenmengers easily live between up to 45 to 50 years complex eisenmenger which dr navarna is talking about they call complex eisenmenger cyanotic heart disease becoming eisenmenger you know they are complex even they easily live 30 to 35 years one decade less but they will still live quite easily converting them into a pphn you know making the circuit very good but very high pa pressure the five year mortality will go up to 75% so when in doubt do not operate Sir, uh, what what happens that uh, year, uh, a few days back we, i have done a cath 9 month old tga patient yes. that duration is around 65 out and pa pressure is same yes. but saturation is more than aortic saturation and when we have given oxygen the uh, pressure remains same but the saturation of pa in uh, an aorta increased yes. so should i go for palliative arterial switch in this case is there a vsd ma'am was there yes, a vsd yes, yes. there is a vsd you could go for a complete closure if there is a vsd in this case the pressure is decided by vsd and you demonstrated that the pressure you know the uh, you demonstrated that aortic saturation is increasing so you could go for a complete proper uh, uh, arterial switch in this case and the last question sir that yeah, uh, yeah. Sir, in trichus making it proper Like yeah, making it proper and not not to worry at all. If at all, better to just open the atrial, you know, make a PFO and leave, uh, so that uh, if there is failure, the sh- it will take care of the failure part. Yeah, don't close the PFO. Just okay. close this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, can I add something? Yeah, yeah. Professor Shetty has pointed something very important. Do not hurry into closing a PST or AST or PTA unless you are really sure. the patient is going to have benefit because when you are closing this the patient is already having higher pulmonary hypertension you are converting it to as a case of primary pulmonary hypertension and you are actually reducing the life span as he was mentioning we uh, isomegalization the patient will live longer we don't have the right to reduce his life span by uh, pleasing ourselves our ego that i have closed this hole We are not closing it. We are actually making a hole in the patient's life. We should be careful about that. Extremely you, good point, uh, Doctor Abdul. And also in ASD, I think I mentioned it once or twice. I had a ASD say two years back. She was baseline saturation eighty nine ninety, oxygen saturation ninety four, PA pressure almost same as aortic pressure. Post cath, the shunt actually was two is to one. but i didn't close this asd because asds don't behave well at all you know vsd pd you can still close but in asd unless there is a baseline shunt more than 2 is to 1 do not close this is something which people just don't discuss but you will be making asd way way worse just like dr abdul says with pda there's a big advantage yeah yeah with pda you can do a balloon occlusion or device occlusion even device occlusion take a device don't release it close pda see what happens in the catheter itself see what happens to the rv pressure if rv pressure starts falling you know at least up to say 60 67 two third of systemic pda can be closed easily sometimes balloons don't hold you know you take a balloon you close it uh, balloon starts moving this side so we have done even device closure but not release you know if you are not sure just recapture the device and get it back if you sure release the spds and vsds are more forgiving as far as pulmonary circulation asd is a different disease because half of them actually have pphn 
you know, they have ASD, so we are forced to call them as Eisenmenger. But it's definitely true that 50% are not Eisenmenger at all. They are PPHN, and ASD is protecting them. Can I add Thank something? You, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. There, are, there are some uh, good drugs on pulmonary hypertension as well. Yes. And give good follow-up to this patient. They are really going to have a good life. Yes, but just to add on there, uh, Professor, even with that, beyond eight years, it is very difficult. You know, all these patients, up to five years, we have increased to eight years or 10 years. But beyond eight years, if they respond, it's different. Respond means you give a drug and the pressure comes to, you know, normal. That happens in a small percentage. You give sildenafil, you give ambicentin, the pressure becomes 30. That's okay. But if pressure remains 89, uh, the systemic or subsystemic, they look better, they do better, but only for a decade. You know, I have had some of them now coming back and I feel sad looking at them every time now. I felt very good in the beginning because they were doing well. But after a decade, they do bad. Whereas Eisenmengers, on the other hand, do extremely well. You know, unless we mess it up, they do well. I mean, the overall message is, yes, we have to individualize treatment. It's not one rule. But if you are in doubt at the end of everything, do everything. If you want to give ambicent and children of ill, give, do a repeat care. Prove that things are better, then you can close. But when in doubt, do not close. That's the message. We, the, as doctors, we always want to do something, but doing something, do no harm is the first rule. Yeah. Exactly, sir. Thank you. Dr. Parag Karki from Nepal, please ask your question. Dr. Parag Karki. Yes, sir. I yeah. can hear. Uh, thank you, sir, for excellent presentation. For continuing the same discussion, sir, uh, there is also a concern that uh, when we have already uh, established pulmonary hypertension, even with reversibility test positive, if we close some percent of the patient progress to having uh, worse disease of the pulmonary, in terms of pulmonary hypertension, even if they have reversibility. So, uh, in respect to newer guidelines, they don't talk about reversibility much. So, should we be doing reversibility tests routinely? Yeah, yeah. I think it's very important, Parag. And you answered most of the questions also very well. Congratulations on that. I saw your name multiple times. Uh, what is very important is ASD don't do. That's for sure. In ASD, do not do reversibility because as I told you, the example which I treated, I didn't close it at all because for ASD, out of question. PDA definitely do. You know, because PDS respond differently, especially if not oxygen, just to the device closure. So the shunt related pH will be removed. In PDA, definitely do. VSD is plus minus. Most VSDs, if you prove reversibility, they do well. VSDs do well. PDS definitely do well. ASDs never do well. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Choyan Singha, do you hear me? Dr. Choyan? Dr. Choyan Singha? So one of the takeaway from today's lecture is that, uh, sir, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, easy, actually, not not easy. The thank you, sir. Sim Sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah. Chan, now uh, Thank you, sir, for your extraordinary presentation, sir. I have a question regarding the vasoreactivity or pulmonary vascular reversibility testing. We usually know that by face mask, we can give the oxygen up to 10 liter and non rebreather marks up to 15 liter. Yes. And in the COVID area, we have come to know that through high flow nasal cannula, we can give the more oxygen up to 78 liter. So how we can uh, uh, accurately do the uh, visual reactivity or pulmonary vascular reversibility testing by giving uh, the oxygen? Yes. The, uh, you know, the, there are two aspects to your question. One is the amount of oxygen delivered, which can be increased with high flow. But here, that is not the point. Point is not about the amount of oxygen. It is about being absolutely only oxygen. You know, when we give this test, we want 100% oxygen means zero nitrogen. When, even when you do high flow, you don't reduce the nitrogen. There is some nitrogen going on. So here it has to be, a you know, like a bag and mask oxygen, which is given. That is the vasodilator aspect. It's not just the amount of oxygen. It's oxygen being absolute, which matters here. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think Dr. Umbejakia has a question. Yes, Dr. Umbejakia, do you hear me? Dr. Jakia, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, please put your question. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. 
Thank yes. you, sir, for your nice, uh, extremely beneficial for um, for a uh, uh, beginner pediatric cardiologist like me. Uh, uh, we are also um, benefited from your lecture, sir. Thank you, sir. I have a question uh, for Lafarge chart. Uh, which heart rate should I consider? Uh, is it beginning of the um, cath study or during procedure? It's the time of sa sample collection. The time of sample collection, whatever heart rate, that is a heart rate. For example, cath, it doesn't matter much because, you know, you're doing everything in seven minutes. But BMB, you know, as a DM resident, I did from Chandigarh and every day we had to present all the cath which we did. For BMB, the pre-heart rate and the post-heart rate are not same. So you need, when you take the sample, you need that heart rate. Yes. Okay, your Another question is, sir, uh, sedation, because the ketamine um, have during pressure uh, taking or during oximetry, uh, what precaution should I take regarding the sedation? Yes, it's important. Because ketamine, uh, pet, ketamine sometimes uh, raises the pressure too much high. Correct. Correct. In that case, we face some uh, problem uh, during taking this uh, oximetry or pressure. Correct. During it procedure, should. both yes. during uh, pre Yes. Because uh, in small children, uh, we need uh, to give the sedation. Yes, yes. I agree with you totally. But if you are doing a PA pressure assessment, the ketamine should be avoided. Because it also depends what you are going to do. If you are going, if you are sure. Uh, today, as, as I was clearly telling you, when we do a cath, we have a lot of information which is already available. And it's not, uh, you know, nobody is playing hide and seek or you know, hiding data. We should realize CATH is complementary to what we, what we yes. already know. So in that, if you are yes. only purpose or the main purpose is PA pressure assessment, you have to avoid ketamine. You can't use it at all. But if your purpose is... So uh, what, uh, what sedation? Yes. So what sedation? Yes, I, I, I may not be the first right person. In adults, what we do is, uh, you know, when I do TE for LA and such procedure, I actually use DEXMED, which works very well. In pediatrics, we have to check with our, you know, we have a cardiac anesthetist here, and they're quite uh, uh, good in their job, but you have to avoid, what we ask them is to avoid ketamine most of the time. So most of the time, we use the ketamine. and uh, Yes, yes. But if your purpose is only PA pressure as assessment, you have to avoid. If you're doing it for anything else than other agents, you know, it, ketamine is good enough. Good enough. Yeah. Okay. For a device closure procedure, it is good enough. If you know that... Yes, sir. In that case, we high, didn't face any problem. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Dr. Arifudaman. Dr. Arifudaman, do you hear me? Yes, sir. What's the, uh, any question left in the chat box? Mm, I think uh, there is a lot of discussion and uh, most of the topics have been touched. Uh, 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 so I think uh, we can continue with the uh, Ranjan Shetty. Okay, Dr. Rajiv Roman, Ro Roman, Dr. Rajiv Roman, Dr. Rajiv Roman, Roman, you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Professor Shetty, for your nice <laughs> yeah. presentation. Yeah. Uh, nice presentation. Uh, Sometimes our fellows and MD students are there of uh, hemodynamics in, in the example. But you present such a way, they find that this is a simple and uh, easily uh, accessible to hemodynamics. Thank you, sir, for your uh, Every patient in case of talk, uh, in every patient is need for a uh, cap. Uh, no, no, that's an interesting question. Yes, no, no, you don't need for every patient and you don't need to waste time. Today's the question is, if you want uh, any reverse, you know, borderline case where you are not sure whether it needs to be closed, including ASD with PH also, you need to do a cath wherever you have doubt, wherever reversibility we already discussed. In cases where there is need for fontan, you have to do a cath. So uh, there are lots of information which is available. We have cardiac CT available. We have, you know, uh, MRI available. But something which none of them give is the pressure. So wherever you think pressure is needed to be measured and pressure is of value, that's where we need to do CATH. But CATH for sake of CATH is not needed. The one question asked by Dr. Arafat. Okay. Uh, he wanted to know how can we differentiate 
pre-capillary pulmonary hypertension from post-capillary pulmonary hypertension by cardiac catheterization? A yeah, pre from post, is it? Yeah. Yes. So for that, you need to know the, um, the LA pressure as well as the PA pressure. You know, uh, the LA pressure will be the post one and the pre will be before this. So you need to know LA versus this. You need to have transcapillary gradient. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We are here uh, around, around two hours' time. Okay. Thank you, Professor Dr. Ranjan Sethi, being with us. I am requesting Dr. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Bosu. Uh, it's from the general manager of Sun Pharma. Dr. Sanjay Bosu, do you hear me? Is a vote of thanks. Dr. Sanjay Bosu, deputy general manager of Sun Pharma Civil Bangladesh. Dr. Sanjay, do you hear me? Please give the vote of thanks for attending. Dr. Sanjay Bosu. Mr. Sanjay Bosu, sorry. Yes, yes do sir. you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. I can hear you. I'm audible, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Mosi Nehmer, for giving chance of to Sun Pharma Bangladesh Limited to part of such a beautiful, relevant and informative program today, sir. And on behalf of Sun Pharma, Honorable Chairperson, Professor Dr. Abdul Wadud Chaudhary, eminent panelist, Professor Abdullah Al Shafi Majumdar, Dr. Nam Momen Jamun, Professor Dr. Abzalur Rahman, Professor Dr. Sayyad Ali Hassan, Professor Dr. Mir Jamaluddin, Professor Dr. Fazilatun Nasa, Malik, Professor Dr. Mohammad Shahabuddin, Professor Dr. Prabir Kumar Das, Professor Dr. Choudhury Meshkat Ahmad, Dr. Khaled Mohsin, and Dr. Kaisar Nasrullah Khan, and all our most valued cardiologists from Bangladesh, on behalf of Sun Pharmaceutical Bangladesh Limited, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to all of you for sharing your valuable experience and time for today's interpretation of hemodynamics, oximetry and pressure data and your this gracious present is really valuable to us. I am sure all of you would join me in thanking Professor Dr. Ranjan Shakti for his excellent presentation as well as the lucid elaboration on the various facets of the interpretation of hemodynamics, oximetry and pressure data. Professor Dr. Ranjan Shetty, it was indeed very gracious of you to find time for this event from your busy schedule. Thank you very much. It was an honor to have you here as our esteemed speaker today. Special thanks to Dr. Mosi Nehmer, Secretary General and Course Director, IPD, for moderating today's event in a seamless flow. I would like to thank Dr. Akam Manur al Islam. Dr. Mohammad Haripur Rahman and Dr. Tanvi Rahman for their cordial support to get all necessary information and arranging this program on time. I would also like to profusely thank on behalf of Sun Pharma all the participants present here for gracing this occasion in spite of this challenging time and participating. It was indeed our privilege to have you all here. Also, let me thank you for continuing your confidence in Sun Pharma products and extending their benefits to your patients. Thanks a lot for your great support all these years. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to appreciate for excellent event management support by Team Media Means for helping us organize this event. Last but not the least, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to all my fellow colleagues, a team of very motivated and dedicated assets of Sun Pharma. Thank you, Team Sun Pharma. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good, safe, and healthy time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sun Pharma, for your uh, great support to arrange the program. Thank you, everybody. Uh, now, I'm requesting Professor Abdullah Chaudhary. Uh, before conclusion, Dr. Ranjan Shetty, do you, uh, Dr. Ranjan Shetty, yes, please yes. hear me? Yes, yes, please I can give, hear you. Uh, before conclusion, you give few comments from you regarding you. We're waiting for next two lectures. I think we are uh, continuing with this lecture, okay? Sure, sir. Thanks sir, a Ranjit. lot for that. And I'll be happy to do it anytime. And you can even tell me the, the format which you want. We could have more examples, more interaction if you want. Or we could start with the... I think someday you and me can talk on the phone and maybe plan the program and go with you all. The way you want, it is good. It's good to put... Uh, Faith to, you know, all the names I knew already and it's good to interact. And, uh, you know, although uh, as uh, Mr. Sanjay Basu told, this is a difficult time, but it did make all of us come together. You know, that's a good part of uh, COVID.
We realized sitting at different places, we could interact. Otherwise, the only way to do is travel. And uh, uh, I'm truly honored to be part of it. As I said, uh, I like Bangladesh a lot and I miss the misty dohi of uh, Bangladesh. Indian one doesn't taste that good. <laughs> so next time I'll come and have it there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, now I am requesting Professor Abdul Chudri, please conclude the session. Yeah. Professor Abdul Chudri, Chairman and Post Director of IPDI. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, we really have enjoyed a good fish, a fish of knowledge. And uh, thanks to the chef, the master chef, Professor Dr. Ranjan Shetty, who has presented a veritable uh, course of dinner for us, for all of us, of different diseases, of different presentations, and the information that can be presented in a beautiful way, very uh, edible way, I would say. Uh, so you have made us more hungry. So today we are satisfied, but we are not satisfied. We will <laughs> need more from you. And we hope that we'll be again meeting with us. And we do promise you, uh, the corona will not last. So. If everything comes back to the near normal level, and if you visit Bangladesh, you'll have plenty of mishti doi and uh, good <laughs> il ilsha. Yeah. <laughs> do that. Uh, before that, uh, again, the attendee, the honorable panelist, and everyone else, thank you very much for being with us. And I have to thank another thing, the corona, because as you were saying, without this, without we would not have been aware of this digital uh, I should say, explosion of means of communication. We would not have been aware of all these things. We would not have come together like this. And this is very nice, seeing everyone's faces and at least uh, share in our enjoyment of things together, at least academically. Thank you again. And thank you, Mohsin and Dr. Uh, uh, San Parma for helping us to in such a beautiful program. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Assalamu alaikum. See you again. Bye. Bye. Assalamu alaikum. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night and stay safe.